The name Merle is, it's a French word or a Breton word and it actually relates to the word pearl. It's, it is made of calcium carbonate, the same material that pearls are made of. We thought that there were two main species here and the most common one is called Phymatolithon calcarium. So the calcarium refers to the fact that it's calcified and it's like a stone. Lithon means like a stone. And then we thought there was another one which is Lithothamnion corallioides, same, similar name. Litho meaning stones again and corallioides like a coral. I dived very extensively in Kirkiran Bay, which is a major bay system to the north of here. And Kirkiran Bay is an area which has um, a very strong current regime. During spring tides, uh, the current reaches about two and a half knots. And that, in this uh, fact, uh, is um, facilitating many animals because currents generally means a good food supply, uh, high oxygenation in the water, and uh, keeping uh, all the rock surfaces and everything clean of debris and so on, which uh, is what most uh, epifaunal animals really, really want. Um, but again, the uh, male has many uh, facets and um, we, as we hear and see on the beach. In other hand, in Brazil, there's a thousand of kilometers of the Brazilian coast covered by rubber. So when I say the word taxonomy, I'm referring to the kind of tools that we are using to, to name and to, to describe a species. And in the case of the mole beds, we do predict that they will begin to disappear in the most northerly regions, and that that habitat may, may disappear and may be replaced with other more fleshy algae. It will be harder for mole in the future to support high-level biodiversity because they are structurally and functionally complex. It's predicted that essentially they will find it much harder to grow and to keep their strength and their structure um, in the future when the oceans are acidified, so we might lose them. One of the most fundamental ways in which human beings can damage melt beds is by digging them up, removing them from the seafloor and then and using that material as a fertiliser or a soil conditioner on land. Um, it's also used to make graveyards look pretty and so forth, because it is a beautiful material. Um, pink when alive and, and a nice white colour when dead, and it's intrinsically attractive. People like to pick it up and play with it. I've, I've been on beaches with children who are just fascinated by this stuff because it does look so nice. It's, it's uh, pretty material. But unfortunately, of course, the, this material builds up over thousands of years, and if you dig it up, it won't come back, or well, certainly not on timescales that are relevant to mankind. I think the uniqueness of Merle is a feature. It has been lost in other countries and it is recognised by USPAR that it has been lost in other countries. And what we have in Ireland is a very unique and very um, extensive range of Merle beds from the north right down to the south of the Atlantic coast. With every Merle bed we have looked at, there is something unique about it. Uh, we're part of the Inframar programme, which is jointly run between the Marine Institute and the Geological Survey of Ireland. It's, uh, it's, it's one of the biggest marine mapping programmes in the world, uh, and we've been going since 2007 with a previous programme prior to that called the Irish National Seabed Survey. From a fisheries management pr perspective, for example, this is hugely important. It's also valuable from a conservation perspective. There's lots of sensitive species uh, growing in the, uh, the coastal area of Ireland on the seabed, uh, and there's all sorts of ecosystem development on the back of that. Mm -hmm.